Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. The pay request is time for Ronald. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. It could be for pretty much any type of video. And you want me to talk about and review the 2023 film Dream Scenario, which is a film that stars Nicolas Cage. Uh, Ari Aster did not direct it. Thankfully, but he did produce it. So I, it does feel a little bit like his type of movie, I will admit. <clears throat> the premise of the film is Nicolas Cage is a professor who, for some reason that's never explained, he keeps popping into people's dreams. And he kind of hears a little bit of rumbling, and then more and more people, when they find out, who he is and where he teaches, fill up his classroom, he gets a little bit of fame. And it seems like in all these dreams he's always kind of standing there, watching, not doing anything, not helping, which kind of bothers him a bit. Now he has a wife, he has two kids, two girls, kind of pretty much in their teens, one's a bit younger. And again, he keeps hearing from these people, and he's like, why am I always just standing there? Like, what's going on? And Nick Cage, I did not mind his performance. It has a little bit of a nasally air about him. And it seems like he means well. He just doesn't do things the, the most perfect way. It does seem like he does care for his kids. It does care for his wife. But it seems like he's a guy that just can't accept his place in life he wants accepted on a broader scale and when this comes about he gets a bit kind of gun ho about this uh, this possibility of fame but also to use it as a platform to get his writings published to get more recognition for his professors teaching his studies when this old uh, like I forget if it was, she was a classmate or maybe an older girlfriend might have been an ex-girlfriend try to remember but when she mentions that he kind of gets intrigued by it and the wife goes oh well what you want to do this is what you think I'd be that cool I had an affair really And there's a few familiar play, uh, people in this. Tim Meadows, he plays the dean of the, the college. There's Michael Sarah, who's part of this viral marketing firm, when this buzz is happening with Nick Cage's character and says, hey, but why don't we do some Sprite commercials? And he's like, what? Yeah, you know, when people see you, then maybe they'll see a can of Sprite. And if people say it was dumb, at least we could tell a fun story. Wow, do you remember when they tried to do that? So they want to use him for fame. And Nick Cage, he wants more to use his fame as a trampoline to get on and get to the higher spaces of his career, of his livelihood. And just be, I guess, known as a somebody. Now granted... His life is pretty good as it is. I did. He has a loving wife. He has two kids that don't seem to hate him. So, you know, be thankful for what you have. That seems to be one of the. I don't. Know, how do I say? It? One of the things to take away from this. But it's more and more myth that, you know, people share their dreams and you see a little montage of these different types of dreams. Like one is hiding on a table with all these alligators. One is hunted down by another person. One is in the middle of an earthquake and trying to hide. Uh, but the cage's terror just stains there. And then he's like, 
you know, why am I doing nothing in the dreams? It just upsets him. It's funny, as upsets him more than them. They don't really care that he doesn't do anything, but he's upset about himself. And then it takes a turn where certain things happen. And because of that, then the dreams start getting much more horrific. You have a bit of cancel culture involved. Uh, Nick Cage, he's, his tear screws up in a few things. And it does become a bit of a bittersweet movie. I think that's what it is. Uh, I thought the film was okay at the end of the day. I thought it was okay. The Cage... I will say I, I do enjoy his filmography in the past 10 years or so because at least he's picking interesting projects. Uh, some I like more than others. For example, Mandy or w Willy's Wonderland are definitely two of the highlights for me in the, of, of his career in the past 10 years. The unbearable weight of... of Massive talent. Even Renfield. I have issues with it. In particular. That bottle of water. <laughs> called a lady. Called an actress. Aquafina my god. But I did like that film overall. I did like Nicolas Cage's portrayal of the, the vampire. <laughs> that wasn't vampires to his. And in this, like I said, he does give a very interesting performance. A very different type of performance with the way he looks and, the, again, his little bit more higher-pitched nasally voice. But thankfully, it doesn't go too overboard, so it doesn't feel like it's just like Steve Urkel or overbearing or annoying, at least in my opinion. Uh, the dream scenes have a little, nice little bit of style and flair to them. <clears throat> but I guess uh, the movie wasn't as funny as I thought it would be and I guess think of the idea I don't know maybe it'd be like a little bit of a more of a dissertation as to why this is happening why this is occurring or not knowing if it was going to be more of a horror movie. Which at times some people label it a horror movie. I would not. I mean when the dreams happen there's a couple of horrific things that happen. Don't get me wrong. But then you think the OTA is going to turn into some kind of thriller. Uh, who knows maybe like the dark half or something. Where now this evil version of Nicolas Cage is kind of coming to fro into... From dreams to a perception to our reality, and then you know, some of you know, the actual dictate has to stop this, or he goes, he knows this is out of hand, so he's trying to find a way to fix it, or trying to, find, or it becomes kind of like he's trapped in something that he had no control over, and so kind of like your know, Truman in the Truman Show has to find a way to escape. Only in this case, be different circumstances. I just the the direction it went in. I dare what it's trying to say, but it was just I. I will say, it became less interesting for me, in the third half than I wanted it to be. I would say the first half was a bit more interesting. They do never. They don't ever explain why this is happening. Maybe that's for the better. Because I guess any explanation you could come up with would seem rather weak or weird or kind of confusing or go like, huh? <clears throat> but yeah, there was a part of me that still wondered as to why this is happening. I will admit, there's a part of me at least some inkling what it could have been. Uh, the wife character, I didn't mind her. But I will say sometimes I felt they could have been a bit more 
understanding of Nick Cage's what his tear was going through. I would say the wife is trying to be a little bit understanding about this and she warns him about going full, full, full force into this and she even says you know maybe you should take a break from this and back up and you know back away from this because there's even a point where uh, spoilers getting more into spoilers starting now where someone breaks into their home and so they do a bit of security sometimes they talk and she's wondering how come you don't show up in my dreams and the wife tells the scenario sort of a fantasy but Nicolas Cage laughs it off and that's where you get kind of the, the first little rust in the armor. At least, well, okay, not the first, but... Because there's all the parts where you see his inadequacies. Like he meets up with this woman who has his thesis, and he's like, Oh, well, that's funny, it sounds a bit like mine. And it goes to this tirade and this argument... And he kind of makes a fool of himself. And even when he's in the car, he realizes he made a fool of himself. Just, this is about a character that's a small man complex. And once he's finally got a bit of taste of fame and more so recognition, possible respect, he jumps for it head first without knowing all the, the possible downs and problems that comes with that. But I will say there's a lot of moments I did feel sort of Nick Cage's character. And I don't know if the movie wanted me to feel that way in certain parts. But I did. Because while he's not a perfect person. None of us are. I can understand his excitement about all this. But he does did do an egregious thing where... Someone worked for Michael Sarah. She mentions how she had this sexual thought about him, and he was very, very intrigued by that person who was much younger and uh, beautiful. I forget she was like twenty some or late twenties. So he tries to do so with her. She allows it. So in that sense, that means Nick Cage is going to cheat on his wife, but. Doesn't end well. He goes off a little bit early, so to speak. Is embarrassed. And it's when that happens, that's when now everyone's dreaming of Nick Cage and things take a turn for it. Or people being choked, or people being beat with a hammer, or people being strangled. So it seems like whatever weird psyche thing has happened, because he tried to do something bad, now. Things have taken a turn. Now here's the thing though. It is bad what happened to... What Nick Cage did was a bad thing. It was. The fact he thought about it. The fact he had an inkling of it. Can't excuse that. Um, I don't know if the wife ever finds out. I know she has an inkling early on. But this is before even Nick Cage has, doesn't think anything of it either. And he's like, nah, I'm not doing that. But I don't think the wife ever catches on later on. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm absolutely wrong. I just missed it. But I didn't think it. I only say that for what happens in the, the third act of the film. But... With the way the public starts treating Nicolas Cage's character, I mean, it's hard to say he doesn't deserve any of it because he tried to cheat on his wife, although no one knows about that. But you see just the amount that people hate this guy, get mad at this guy, where even he goes, I didn't do anything wrong, which is true, he didn't do anything wrong to them. Now the famous con Topsy Turvy. I just get into a whole notion how we bring someone up and then we tear them down 
whenever something happens, whether it's fair or unfair. He tries to give this apology video when he has a nightmare of himself doing something to him. But it also comes off as a non-apology. And so people disliked him even more. I mean, I will admit though his apology, while it could have been worded better... I couldn't really blame his defense because at this point he had been beaten up randomly by people. He had his toll, his, his toll, his car, not total, but it was vandalized with someone writing loser on it. If they had found out that he had tried to cheat on his wife and then they're punishing him for that, I could maybe understand it a bit more. And then you did you get into the whole conversation of, well, how much do you, <clears throat> or how much would you punish someone over that, something that almost happened? And then you, but that's not really the case here. And so, again, I'm not saying Nicholas Cage doesn't deserve anything bad happen to that character. But at the same time, the amount of stuff that he goes through, and again, his apology, again, could have been worded a bit better, but I can't really blame his thought process of, you know, defending himself and going, you know, I didn't do anything to you, and I, you know, it's affected me as well, which it is. <clears throat> and now people look at him differently. People are... His wife almost gets fired. P kids at school are calling him Freddy Krueger. Or kids are telling his kids that he's Freddy Krueger. And again, at the same time, Nick Cage is not doing this on purpose. But again, it's... In a way, it did occur because he did try to cheat on his wife, so... In a way, it is his fault. And because he doesn't recognize that. But again, it's not that they don't know that. Like, the public doesn't know that. I don't think his wife knows that. Or his kids know that. Unless he mentioned his apology. And I just completely missed it. I apologize for that. But, but pretty much after that. Yeah, he wants to see his kids. But he's kind of locked out he can't see his kids at this play she's doing because he's canceled a bright saint is he just wants to see his daughter's play and a ruckus is caused that because of some time later where he's divorced he does finally got a book going but now it's a lot smaller and they changed the title to I am your nightmare which he didn't want that title he kind of got what he wanted, fame and recognition, just not what he wanted. He got a book published, but now he's a very sad, depressing guy. But he's got his book tour. At least he got what he wanted, but at a pretty big cost. And definitely not how he wanted. And then they add this thing where... The dreams with him and other people's dreams just stopped randomly. And now there's this device where you can share yourself into other people's dreams. I guess that's... I, I don't think that needed to be brought up at all. I guess just to showcase the final bit where Nick Cage is trying to get into his wife's dream and give her the fancy she wanted where he's dressed up the way she had described earlier. But then of course he find out no, he's it's just his he couldn't 
he wasn't allowed in her dream. He's just dreaming himself. So he just lifted up just like his daughter when she had the dream at the beginning of the film, the first scene. And at the end of the dream, she's lifted up. The Shoti is, is steep in the dream. Here is happening the cage as well. It comes as very bittersweet. Like he wishes this was real. He wishes this could be the case, but Sally will not be. And while he did do something wrong, there's a part of me that's like, I it's still hard for you to say the punishment fits the crime. I'm not saying he shouldn't be punished at all, but. Uh, Let's say it comes off as very, very bittersweet. Again, you didn't need the whole now everybody can dream along. It, it could just been they just were stopped. And just him more reflecting, reflecting on what happened. Uh, he does have a talk with his ex now. But maybe do you have like a sincere apology? Even if the, maybe she doesn't take him back. But say his true feelings. At least give a little bit of sense of hope. Or a little sense of, of something. And. Then he just you know, dreams of his wife. What he should have done. You would have gotten the same sequence at the end. But. Like I say it's just not what I expected. When I got to the third act. I, mean, I just think with the intrigue of him pop up in people's dreams, it could create a lot more in terms of a thriller or in terms of an actual horror film if that wasn't the case. Like I said, I didn't really think it was as funny as I thought it was going to be. Marco Serra, he appears a couple times, then he just, I just, after everything that happens, he kind of just disappears. Like I said, it's one of those films that I didn't mind it because I didn't mind the idea. I didn't mind the actors. I think Nick Cage, his performance was at least interesting. I did what he's trying to go with, uh, with in terms of the ideals. But at the same time, I probably would never, I would never watch this film again. I would never watch this film again. I know Ronald said it was, I think, his favorite film of 2023. That's cool. It wouldn't be on my list. It wouldn't be on my top 10 list. Didn't I didn't, did not hate the film. Just thought it was okay. Like I said, I think, you know, the third act being kind of a, uh, I don't know. Try to maybe go, that's it. Uh, you know. Maybe that's just me, though. But with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. Uh, it's not badly filmed. Like I said, the dream scenes have a decent bit of style. Like the way people are shown being floated up. But at the same time, nothing too crazy, effects-wise or anything. Still pretty minuscule on that front. I was surprised that Tim Meadows were there. I'm like, oh, the ladies' man, Tim Meadows. Wow. It's been a while since I've seen him in something that wasn't an Adam Sandler. Because usually the only time I would see him in a movie is he had like a small part in an Adam Sandler movie. I mean, Tim Meadows in it, but that was cool. Like I said, I thought it was going to be a bit more of a horror. Like I already said, but overall... It was okay. With that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.